Hey there my fellow designers and creators, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in the Super Ultimate Guide to Design Systems. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and learn to create icon buttons. Icon buttons are very common, used in pretty much every app. You can't have an app without an icon button. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, here you can see that I have a couple of screenshots that are taken from the app, and I'm gonna explain something that's very important. And here is where you're gonna start seeing inconsistencies, you're gonna see a lot of problems, and I'm gonna uncover so many things over here. Basically, the element that we're going to be creating is this, uh, you know, icon button, which basically this component where it has an icon and it's a button because you can tap on it and it performs an action, right? And of course, there are multiple types. There are so many things to think about. It's not really that simple when you're building a design system. So I'm going to get into all of that. But before that, let's understand why did we call it an icon button? What is the actual terminology? Is this something that we're coming up with on our own? What do the guidelines say? So let's look at that. So here I'm in the material design guidelines in the component section, and we're going to come down here to actions. So we have something called as the common button. We have something called as an extended floating action button. We've got your normal floating action button. Then you've got something called as icon buttons, and then you've got something called as segmented button, right? Now, here we already know that it's an icon button and it's also quite self-explanatory when we look at it as to what it's called. It's, it, you know, you can actually very much clearly see that it's an icon that uh, acts as a button and it performs a certain action, right? So material design directly says that this is an icon button. Let's come down to the human interface guidelines. I'm going to come down here to, um, I think none of this, um, I think we'll come down to menus and actions, right? I think because it's an action. So we've got activity view, we've got buttons. We've just got like a single category called as buttons, context menus, talk menus, edit menus, ornaments, you know, none of these are that. So we have toolbars as well, but of course these are actually icons or buttons. So maybe let's see if there's some documentation on that. Um, there isn't any real documentation. They don't, they're not talking about, um, you know, the icon specifically, they're just talking about the bottom bar. So this is not really helpful. And I think what human interface guidelines just says is they call it like a button, right? But we don't want to make it so broad because we can have multiple types of buttons. We've got primary buttons, secondary buttons. We've got icon buttons. We might have floating action buttons. We've got a lot of different types of buttons. So we don't want to put everything into one category, right? Um, what else do we have? We can actually go to Mobin as well and look at that as well. So here in Mobin, if I come down here, I've selected Airbnb and if I come down here to the UI elements section, you can see we've got a lot of types of buttons called as buttons, floating action button, tab, checkbox, switch, text field. All of these are, you know, uh, things that I can tap on. Uh, we've got bars, we've got cards, all of this. We don't really see something called as an icon button, overlays, imagery, right? Even if I click on icon, for example, I can see, you know, every place that there's an icon being used. So we have an icon over here. We've got icons over here, right? But I've already gone ahead and taken all the screenshots that are relevant, right? So we don't really have something called as an icon button. We have something called as a button. What that basically means is that we're sort of free to pick what we want, right? Because it's not a hard and fast rule that it has to be present in material design, human interface, and mobbin. It's a little bit flexible for us to choose what we want. Now we're going to obviously pick, you know, material design in this case, because, you know, uh, we already have a component that says icon button, but in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and follow material design guidelines because we already have a component that says icon buttons, right? Now, obviously the naming convention does not have to, you know, always be regarding material design and human interface. The naming convention can be anywhere, anything. And I'm going to show you that we're going to create a lot of components that don't even have names in any of the guidelines, right? And how do we name this is something that we have to think about, right? So when I, when we come to those videos or chapters, I'm going to talk about that. But for now, we're going to keep this very simple and just go with icon button. Anyway, back to Figma, you can see here uh, we have these buttons. Now, of course, um, here you can see that it's got a little bit of a uh, stroke. We've got an icon. And for this, we're going to be using the icon component that we made, the icon atom that we made in the previous video. And then we've got a surface, right? Um, and also you can see here is that maybe if I come over here, you can also see that I have the pressed state, right? Or hover state in this case. In in this, in when you're using apps, there is no such thing called as hover state, but you can sort of interchangeably use the term, right? So if I were to just explain what I'm talking about, if I get my rulers out and I come over here and add this line on this one and then add, whoops, add another ruler over here. Now this is a state where I've not tapped on it, but then the moment I tap on it, you can see here that the size sort of decreases a little bit. Right? There's a little bit of a decrease um, in the size. And uh, obviously you can see over here that here uh, the stroke is outside and here it is, right? So it is shrinking a little bit, right? So we always, we obviously have to document these things as well, right? So I'm gonna close this up. Um, and now I'm gonna come down over here. 
Here we have the search bar and here it also is an icon button. This has a stroke, but it does not really have any shadow. Um, here the hover state or pressed state is a little bit different. Here you can see that it shrinks in size and you can see that, you know, it has a gray color surface, um, which wasn't over here. And then in the applied state, you have a totally different UI altogether, right? This is also an icon button. Coming down over here, this is also an icon button, right? Uh, this has a shadow, this has a stroke, um, and when you click on it, you can obviously, this is the applied state or the filled state, right? And then coming down over here, we have these buttons here as well. I don't really have the press state for this, but basically I know that the opacity of the icon just reduces a little bit, right? So this is 100% white, it sort of reduces to like 90% white, uh, but that's the thing. Um, and over here, this here is a really cool inconsistency that I'm going to show you. So if I come over here uh, and add the rulers, right? So let me just go ahead and bring back the rulers. I'm going to add this over here on the top and bottom. Okay. And uh, check this out, right? If I go to the next one, it's the same icon. It's the exact same screenshot on basically the exact same screen. But here, the um, icon, the touchable area is actually a lot more than this, right? For the search one, it's actually really small. But for this, it's actually pretty big, right? This absolutely makes no sense. And like I said, this is the inconsistency that I've been talking about. And exactly, this is a very big inconsistency, right? And when we create the icon button, I'm going to show you so many more inconsistencies in terms of sizing and spacing, but we'll get to that later. Um, and then... Uh, finally, we have another one over here. This one is pretty weird because first of all, there is so much of gap over here. The nav bar is totally messed up. And here, this icon is pretty huge, right? If I were to quickly just give you an example of, uh, you know, I'm going to bring this one over here, right? Um, or maybe I'm just going to go ahead and uh, crop this to get an example, right? I'm going to bring that over here, right? You can, you can clearly see that this icon is super huge compared to the search icon. Right. And this doesn't even have a pressed state or hover state. I typed tapping on pressing on it, but it didn't react or give me any feedback. So that's again, you know, a poor design and really bad inconsistency. Right. So like I said, there are way too many things to fix in this app. So we're going to go ahead and fix all of these one by one slowly, but it's important to understand. Right. And this is basically me sitting and doing a big inventory of all the screens that I have, all the states do I have. Now let's discuss. Now let's talk about how many icon buttons should we have? Should we have one? Should we have many? How do we handle the states? Right. It's actually quite simple and you don't really have to overcomplicate things, right? And it's very important to keep things simple and easy to understand while at the same time following the same principles throughout every element, right? So what does that mean? So I'm going to start off by just grabbing these three things and bringing it over here, right? And all of this is going to be basically one type of icon button, right? Because they are in the nav bar and then they behave the exact same way, right? So um, over here, for example, this is uh, in the nav bar and this is an icon button. It's very simple. Of course, this is in an elevated state and this is not in an elevated state, right? And of course, when I start scrolling, this navigation bar is going to become completely white, right? Maybe I'm going to get a screenshot for that quickly. So I'm going to paste a screenshot over here. And as you can see, as I scroll, um, this nav bar just gets converted into this flat icon, which is basically this, right? So we can consider all of this to be one category. All right. Now we also have an applied state over here. So this basically is going to, you know, have an applied state, but it's just the icon that's actually changing. It's not changing the whole look of the icon button. It's just the icon that's changing. So for the heart icon, we can have two variants. We can have uh, an unselected and a selected variant, right? So that's fine. Now, what about this? This has a completely different hover state. This has an applied state as well. Here, we don't really have something called as an applied state because it's, you know, really simple and straightforward. So what we can do is we can still call this an icon button and combine it with this. But the problem here is that this one, this entire small component is going to be used only in the search bar. It's not going to be used anywhere else, right? This pattern of having something with a opac with a, with a different background on tap and then, you know, a, an applied state, right? This is going to be very much local to this search bar. So rather than combining it with the main icon button component, we can still call this an icon button. We can call it the filters icon button, or we can call it the filters icon or something, or we can call it the filters button or something. And then we can make it a local atom when we are creating the search bar. Now in this course, I'm not, now in this video, I'm going to be specifically focusing only on these, and I'm not going to be 
um, covering this in this video, mainly because I'm not creating the search bar, right? When I create the search bar, I'm going to make this. But in this video, I'm going to be making these screens. So it makes sense to focus on these. And another interesting thing over here is that we have icon buttons here as well. So this is also an icon button. I can tap on it and that triggers an action. And I also have a tapped state over here. So when you tap on it, you can see the color changes over here. Now it's interesting that it doesn't have an opacity. It more like has a darker color background. So that's something very important to keep in mind. And so this is going to be another category. So I'm going to put this in the middle, right? Um, over here again, again, these ones are very much local to these card components, right? Let me probably get another screenshot. I'm going to paste that over here uh, quickly. So over here as well, this is the exact same component. It's just that the padding here is a little bit different, but that is related to this component. And these are very much local to these card components, right? You will not see these being used in anywhere else other than these types of cards, right? Now, in essence, all of these cards will belong to one family, right? So basically, in short, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and um, create um, like a fill, all right? I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to press T on my keyboard. I'll call this icon button. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and so this, we're going to call it an icon button, uh, which is going to be a new component, right? It's just, it's going to be a component. All right. Center this. All right. This is going to be a, this is going to be like a separate component because it's going to be used in multiple places, right? And we're also using the icon atom. I'm going to come down over here for this. We can call this, um, the filter icon button. Like I said, naming convention, we can think about this later. And uh, this is going to be a local atom. This is going to be a local atom only for the search bar. Coming down over here for uh, this one. Um, all right. This, we can call it um, a selector button or we can probably call it a toggle. You know, let's say we call it a toggle. And in the toggle, we'll basically have our ordinary switch our regular switch component. And we can also have this because we can turn this on and off, right? And this will also, this will end up becoming a global atom. This is going to be a global atom, mainly because of the fact that it's going to be used in multiple types of cards. It's not going to be used in one card. Here, I'm just showing you two. There are so many other types of cards that are there um, in the app and it's going to be used on all of them. So I'm going to call it a global atom. Um, and over here, this is going to be pr probably the same as this one. So I'm going to copy this and um, bring that over here. Um, all of these are pretty much going to have the exact same behavior. Go ahead and bring this up. Okay. Um, but again, we will not be making this particular screen, but we will try to create these buttons. And then finally, we have this, which is pretty much the exact same as this one that we have over here. Right, it's the exact same thing, but it's just that the sizing is messed up. So we're going to make sure that, you know, when we create the navigation bar, it's correct, right? So now after doing this whole inventory analysis, uh, you can see that we have this global atom. Here we have a local atom for the search. And here also we have the icon button. Now, in essence, technically, all of these are icon buttons. You know, all of them put together are icon buttons. So um, now that we have done this, we can go ahead and in the next video, go ahead and actually create these icon buttons. But again, let, let me repeat myself. I'm not going to be creating these ones. Um, I'm going to be creating only uh, these ones because these are the ones that are pertain to um, this particular screen. So in the next video, I'm only going to create these icon buttons. If I ever do make videos uh, in the future for search bars and these other card components, we can go ahead and make this button. And this icon button is going to be used here in the navigation. It's going to be used over here and it's going to be used um, over here in the player as well, right? So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So then, then take care and bye-bye.